Ah, Rust. Such a beautiful game. But we're not here to discuss the aesthetic qualities of Rust landscapes. We're here for batteries and charging. So, we've got a quick mock-up here of a windmill and a couple of solar panels. And the reason I made this video is because I haven't really seen any videos uh, that talk about this recently. There's plenty out there talking about the uh, infinite power circuit and all that stuff. But that is long gone. Uh, or you can still use it, it still works. But when that was about was when, I, when electricity was introduced, when I was playing Rust, um, because there was a bug, or whether they did it by design and changed it, where it which, blah, 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 which was when you charge a battery, um, any load on that battery at all, even if you were putting in like this windmill is churning out 61 at the moment, these four solar panels are chucking out 80, you could be putting that in a small battery that can only take 10 maximum for charging, um, and it would still drain even if you had one on it. Now, so what you had to do was this blocker and a couple of branches. Uh, infinity infinite power loop so that during the day it would use the excess power from solar panels or windmill and uh, charge the battery and anything over that uh, you would power your base and if it got just below that amount that you needed um, for your base the battery would kick in so it would have a chance of charging and surviving the night for lights heating and all that sort of stuff that's changed. That changed quite a long time ago in Rust. Um, I would say over a year ago. I don't know the exact date, but they patched it. Um, so now it's more realistic. So if you've got power coming into a battery and you're still using it at the same time, um, it won't just drain out. It takes into account this power coming in. So uh, that makes things a lot easier. You don't need this infinite power loop or anything like that. Um, so, and I'm just going to demonstrate that by throwing a, few a couple of batteries down that I've got here. Medium small and large necessarily in that order and we'll throw them down I'll put a uh, small one here medium which I personally think looks the best because it was made last time. and large which is you can see the box isn't on the front there the box is here now I don't really block the way of that power meter there we go. So, you'll notice the medium battery always sparks. It's the animation of the, the item. It doesn't mean it's charging, discharging, whatever. It's just uh, just a cool looking effect. A cool looking effect, if I can spit my words out. So, the reason I put a windmill there as well, um, a lot of people think that, um, just that I've noticed that, you know, or I see a lot of bases with thousands of windmills sitting on top, over exaggeration just not necessary I mean I don't know what you're powering some bases have got like five windmills on there and they're like powering like four turrets it's ridiculous if you manage a power properly you don't need that level but I think uh, you know people get them they just throw them up because it's uh, a bit of status makes the base look a little bit more scary um, solar panels just in case you're not aware um, they uh, have one power output the maximum each fully healed up solar panel can produce is 20 so if it is damaged it will produce less um, I don't know how proportionate that is. I think it is pretty pretty accurate so that if your, dam your damage is like 50%, you'll only get like 50% out of it. Bearing in mind these are getting 20 because they're in full sun at the moment. Um, I have positioned these all in this situation towards the south. The reason for that is, and I've mentioned this on another video of mine, um, if you press G, you can see here on the Rust map, this is as much, as, uh, much zoom out I can get, I am in the northern part of the map, the middle part being this sort of uh, 21 line, roughly. If you're in the northern part, the way Rust works, um, it's more beneficial to point the solar panels to south, as you can see from my um, compass at the top of the screen. You just get more sun throughout the day on those solar panels. So overall, you're going to get more input into your batteries for charging. You can just put one one way, one one the other, so you're catching the sun rising and setting. But overall, you will get less power throughout the entire day. If you've got excessive solar panels, you can just put a few extra on there. It doesn't matter which way you point them, um, within reason, you'll get enough power to charge a battery. But if you've got you know, only one one solar panel, for instance, and you've got a small battery. A solar panel could do a maximum of 20, and it will fluctuate depending on the sun or uh, time of day, uh, where it is on it. So, for instance, when this gets right over here, it might only be like 
five or even nothing. Um, one solar panel will keep a, a small battery going all the time. At night time there will be enough power in this battery um, to uh, power your lights, even at its max capacity, which I'll touch on in a second. So yeah, that's just a, a little tip. Point them towards the center of the map. If you're on the center, it's a little bit tricky. I would personally probably have them either way, um, or even east and west. Uh, you just got to try and um, try your best with that, you know, or try and get a couple of extra solar panels to um, accommodate that. Um, so yeah, a windmill, they're very good. The higher they go, the more power you get, and you get it through the night, which is their biggest benefit. At the moment, this one's only producing 37 because the wind goes up and down. If I put that on a higher tower, which is why you tend to see them up on towers, high on bases, you will get more power. From my experience and memory, um, for every floor you go higher, you get about seven to 10 more power. So in this same wind level now, that would be 47 or 45 with another level. So yeah, get it as high as you can. Um, and you'll get more power out of it. And they are consistent through the night as well. They do drop off when the wind drops a little bit, because that was about 50 or 60 earlier when we started. Um, but yeah, but I'm a big fan of solar panels. I think they're, um, people think they're a bit fussy, you don't get enough power from them, but they're generally pretty good. So anyway, onto the charging. So let me quickly put something that's gonna drain a battery. Let's have some, let's have a heater. Oops, I spell it right. There we go. These take three power from memory. Yeah, one, two, three. We'll have uh, a couple of them. Or even six. So if I put, for instance, two heaters here. Ugh. Oh, that's annoying. Sorry. OCD. Still not perfect, but it'll do. So if I, I've got two power sources here from my solar panels with a switch and from my windmill. Windmill's only chucking 38 out. Doesn't matter which one. This can only take a maximum of 10 as, you, as I hover over it. Um, it's currently got a, a capacity of 20 minutes, so it has got a tiny little bit of power in it. Let me just put that down there and along there. And let's just feed this into these heaters. in it'll come on for a second it's going to drain out pretty fast you can see it's got six minutes of life in it actually um so um even though it's not fully charged uh, it's only using three power it can churn out a maximum of 10 so if we did put pull the full 10 out of it it would probably last and it was fully charged it would probably last 10 minutes so you can see it's got six minutes there if i connect up this other heater because you can pass through these probably be three minutes now there you go double the amount so now before doesn't matter how much power you put in this battery that would continue to go down which is why you needed the infinite power loop uh, to shut off uh, using the battery during the day and the only way that would stop that draining is that with a if you had a master switch like one of these that will switch to off or a blocker directly above it blocking the power drain um, so now if I put power in it from this what we've got here we've got 40 which is you know, plenty for this uh, this experiment. There, down, 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 and the inputs, of course, is on the side. So if I put this power in here, you can see two minutes twenty is currently two nineteen, two eighteen, going down a lot. Fourteen rust watt minutes. I think that RWM means it's like a its own in-game uh, electricity measurement. So if I put this in, the maximum it can charge for 10. So now, if I turn the switch on, is a good point. So now you can see the power is going up. Charge left, two minutes 20, still powering the heaters. They're taking six. It's taking its um, full 10 of electricity and it's going up, which is great. So you can use power for turrets and stuff during the day and it will continue to charge if you've got enough power going into it. Now, they say, from um, what I read, is charging is 80% efficient. So if you were using, um, if you were only putting 10 in this, 
from uh, whatever source you've got and it was exactly 10, it would be the equivalent of that 8. Because we're well over the top, it's it's charging and it's still powering these things, no problem. Which was great, which is how, in my opinion, electricity always should have worked in Rust because that's more reflective of real life. Um, if you want to power a larger battery, of course, it's the same deal. Got a little connection here. There we go. So this will start to charge up. There's so much is going in here. 80 from these solar panels, still doing a good job. Um, oh, turn the switch on. Gets me every time. And this this is a this battery can support uh, 50 power. So this is 10, which means basically three of those heaters and a switch if you had an on-off switch here and you're done. Uh, or lights wise, five lights with no switch or four lights and a switch so using nine, that's it. With this, obviously 50, um, it's just so much more capacity. 25 lights or 24 and a switch um, because every device uses some power. Any switch, any uh, logic gate, any branch, it takes a minimum of one power. Um, or more so even if you've just got a load of switches or branches in the loop you're going to be eating power and branches obviously when they section power off of two uh, they're going to be using two power so you must uh, remember that so yeah that's charging up nicely it's the same deal this is the best one really just because it's just small power and I can do it from here this is charging up nicely as well if you've drained this with loads of power I mean this is what we've got going in here still 80 okay so let's uh, Let's get something a little bit more juicy, like uh, turrets. Make a couple of those. They, these two use 10 each. Um, or more if you connect up the um, warning, um, the information electricity output, so that's when it's on low ammo, when it's acquired a target or it's empty of ammo. If you plug lights into those, you need to add plus one power for each one of those you use, so 11, 12, 13 respectively. Uh, so if I just put these down, so one, two, and where's the third one? There we go. And now to get these, uh, just for convenience, I'm just gonna use a, um, a three-way splitter, which splits the power evenly amongst all outputs. You know what, I'll put it here. My bad planning. Okay, so power output, down. Over to here, and along. So now we've got three outputs here. One, two, three, they all say zero at the moment. If I don't use one, then it will just split it between two and I'll get 25 per uh, socket. Well, not quite 25, because this in itself will use one again, as mentioned before. So, uh, in this case, I'm going to use all three. So, do that, do that, do that. Just a little bit of semi neatness. That's still a complete mess. That's powered up. No gun in that, of course. But we don't need a gun. Guns do not add to the power requirement. And that's there. Cross and up. Next one's powered up. This one across there. And to there. And underneath and there. So they're all powered up. This battery now should be using about 30, maybe 31. Oh, the splitter counts as. Yeah, okay. So each one of these you'll see are using. It's not using 16. That's because this device is splitting the total power it's got coming in. So two 16s, 32, and another one, 48. That's because uh, this is using some power as well. This is using one, which is 49. You can't split 49. It has to be, it has to be a whole number. You can't split 49 three ways. 
16, 16, and 16, yeah, is the is the next available set of three whole numbers it can it can do. Uh, so, and as it's got 80 coming in, as the uh, the video is all about the charging of batteries, etc., you can see the power is still going up. It's using 31 as it can it shows here because of the three turrets, 10 each, and that one uh, splitter that uses one power. So it's actually using 31. Even though it's saying it's using 16, it's displaying 16 at each port, that's just its total available. It's just the way Rust works. But the battery, if you've got an uh, electric cable in your hand, will always show you exactly what it's using. So it's using 31. The charge is still going up. 11 minutes in it so far, based on what it's being drained out of. Um, if we included uh, another few devices um, in this circuit then that, that 11 minutes would, would be less because it totally recalculates it uh, based on usage. So that's that. You can see it's charging up. No infinite power loop needed uh, with blockers etc. Those days are really gone unless you really want to um, but it doesn't, in my opinion, it doesn't really add much advantage. Um, you might as well just chuck it straight in the battery take off the battery what you want, any excess will charge it up um, and it balances quite nicely. So uh, so yeah, there you go, batteries and charging. The large battery is exactly the same as the other two except it holds 100 instead of 50. So um, where possible you always want to try and make sure you've got 100 going into that during the daytime with solar panels um, just to charge it back up. But it will still charge with 60 or 70 or 80 but of course if you're using that much power it will never get a full charge if you're using 80 out of this and you're only ever putting 60 in you know at daytime so at night time it's getting nothing it'll eventually go flat so um, that's just something to think about okay well thanks for watching the video hope you liked it please uh, smash the like button and uh, give a subscribe if you did see you in the next one